Okay, here we go with another Lightroom edit. This is of a picture of Grand Central Market. Uh, this is a picture I took uh, in the rain, obviously. Uh, it was a rainy day, and I went across the street and took out my wide-angle lens, and I took a picture. And as you can see, it's very distorted. The vertical lines here are all kind of angling in which is very characteristic of a wide-angle lens. And so we need to fix this, and we need to do some other things too to make this picture look a little bit better. So what I'm going to do first is I'm in Lightroom, and I'm going to go down to uh, the lens correction section here. And I'm going to go to the manual section here where you have these sliders that um, kind of adjust and fix uh, the distortion of your camera. One thing you can do is you can click the profile and you can click on uh, enable profile corrections and if your lens is detected by Lightroom it'll show up here. If not, I use the Tokina, uh, actually a Tokina 11 to 16 lens and you can see that it is making somewhat of a correction here. If I click before and after you can see it's kind of correcting for the vignetting the natural vignetting of this lens before and after uh, so I'm gonna do that but uh, the thrust of this video is going to be to show you these uh, features right here and the one slider that I'm gonna go to is the vertical uh, slider here and I'm gonna actually take this vertical slider and I'm gonna move it to minus 16 and I want you to watch what happens to the photo okay I used I think minus 16 and you can see there that the the entire photo kind of shifted down and it's correcting for that distortion in the side so now I have kind of more of a parallel uh, uh, vertical line here not a parallel vertical line but a vertical line um, I'm also going to change my horizontal slider here I'm going to move my horizontal slider uh, to about minus three and when I do that notice how I'll do this aggressively so you can see see how it's twisting the photo here and that kinda also corrects for distortion uh, there are some other sliders here that you can play with but those are the, the main two that are going to uh, fix this for me uh, and then I'm also going to rotate this uh, about minus, or yeah, let's see, what did I use? I used plus four, okay, plus, uh, I'm sorry, plus 0 0.4. And I'm going to rotate that just a tad there. Okay, so vertical uh, correction, horizontal correction, and slight rotation. Okay, once I do that, I'm going to go slide back up and crop this photo. So I'm going to get on my cropping tool here and select that. And I'm going to crop in, so I crop away this little area off to the right here. So I'm going to move that in. And then I'm going to crop the top, and I'm going to come in also to there, because we don't need to see this business here. Then I'm going to grab my photo, and I'm going to move it all the way up to the top. Okay, somewhere around here and I kind of like that so I'm gonna hit my return key and set that as my cropping okay so I've kind of straightened this and I've kind of uh, uh, you know I've cropped it I'm still not liking the way this line looks here but this line is kind of going the other way so it's gonna have to be kind of a compromise um, in this particular photo. I wasn't on a tripod, I was hand holding this and so it was, uh, you know, it's always kind of difficult to get everything straight, especially with the wide angle lens. Um, okay, so let's uh, go in and fix the uh, uh, the exposure and the tone of all of this. Uh, I'm going to go over here and go back up and start with my highlights. I'm going to bring my highlights over to about Oh, minus 85 to pull out all of the highlight detail and then I'm gonna move my shadows to the right about the same amount 
um, to about 80, 84, 85, and pull a lot of the detail that you don't see in the shadow areas. Then I'm going to do my little trick of holding the Option key down, grabbing the white slider, moving it to the right until the first bits of blown out area show up. And then I'm going to do the same thing with my blacks and kind of come more so over to the left with the blacks. Let that go. I'm going to boost my clarity a little bit. Move that to the right. Up my vibrance a little bit where I create this kind of diagonal shape here. And usually when you uh, increase the clarity, you also increase the saturation. And it seems like it's the oranges that gets oversaturated. So I'm going to come down to my orange saturation here and pull that back a little bit. And go to about minus 21 or so. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit of sharpening. So I'm going to come down to my detail area and I'm going to up my sharpening to about 70 or so. And then I'm going to come down to my noise reduction and give it about 30 noise re luminance noise reduction. But I don't want the sharpening to occur everywhere, so I'm going to mask the sharpening. I'm going to hold down the Option key, click on the masking slider, and move it to the right. Again, everything that's white will be sharpened. Everything that's black will not be sharpened. So I'll leave it about there. And then lastly, what I'm going to do to this, well, a couple more things, is come up and I'm going to add a gradated filter here, a gradation filter to the top because it's really bright up here and I want really the focus to be here in the entrance of Grand Central. So I'm going to grab the gradient uh, filter. I'm going to come up to the top of the photo. I'm going to hold my shift key down, click and drag down a gradient. Okay, now that's a little bit too dark, so I will bring the exposure back a little bit. Okay, just so it darkens the top just a hair. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the bottom. I'm going to hold down the shift key, drag up from the bottom. Okay, and the fact that it's really dark uh, is kind of good because it gives you an idea of what, how this is, uh, how this works. So I'm going to bring my exposure back quite a bit. Okay, I just want to darken the bottom just a hair. Okay, and now if I do a quick before and after, this is before, this is after. Again, before and after. We can see the effect. Actually, I'll go to lights out so we can see this on a black background. So bef um, before and after. And you can see much more detail in the rims of the tires here because of the opening of, of the shadows. Uh, you can see a little bit more detail of what's going on inside. Okay, so once I have my edit done, what I usually do... Oh, actually, one more thing is I'm going to do a little vignetting on the edges so I'll come down to my effects and I'm going to burn the edges a little bit with my highlight priority and just darken that up just a hair. Okay. Again, not too much but bringing a little bit more attention here to the front. Okay, so before and after. Lastly, I'm going to export, and I'm going to go to File and Export. And when I post these to the internet, to the website, uh, <clears throat> Google Plus, or, or Google Photos, or Facebook, I always set my uh, resizing to fit at a width of 2048 or a height of 2048, depending on whether it's a landscape or portrait uh, photo. And then I click my watermark so that it exports with my watermark. Um, I click export. Uh, up here in the upper left you can see the progress bar of when your photo has been exported. 
uh, how long it takes. I usually find with a, a camera raw photo being down res to 2048, it usually takes about maybe 20 seconds or so, 20 or 30 seconds. And once that goes through, I'll see uh, that photo on my desktop. And if I slide this away here, I can see that photo right here. Uh, it's been exported. So I'll double click this. Oh, hasn't been exported yet. OK. There it goes. Looks like it was taking a long time. And it's done. And there it is. And if I double click that, I'll open it up in preview. And you can see the photo with the watermark and such. And that's what I would upload. Okay, that's it. See you later.